guys, this is Jessica Gilbert with Sunny Living, and today we are going to talk with Scott Siri with Siri Content Development. I first met him when I started at Biz to Biz, and I used to be a sales manager, but he helped me grow Sunny Day Cleaning Services by talking about niche markets, and I wanted to bring him on today so we could talk about that. So, Scott, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, Scott Siri, and I'm a copywriter. Uh, basically, what that means is anything you see written is generally written by a copywriter, but most people don't understand that term. So I actually rebranded myself as Scott the Storyteller, where I tell the story of your business and I help create this nice story that people resonate with and it draws people in. So they want to do business with you because now they have this emotional connection. Awesome. What made you decide to start Siri Content Development? Uh, so I was freelancing, just doing some copy, blogging, just content writing for several years before that. And kind of as my son got older and he was off into school, I could focus more on the business. And so I decided to rebrand it as Siri Content Development, where I could incorporate everything, make it a legitimate business. So I'm not just this guy out here dabbling anymore. And so right. it's an actual business that people can grab onto. Sure. Um did you find the first few years of business difficult? And if so, how? I know I did personally. So. Uh, not terribly because I was working full-time for somebody else. Sure. And so I just very slowly ramped it up. And mm -hmm. I was able to start with just one blog that I was writing. And I thought, hey, if I can do this one time, I could do this two times. So I found another one and I got two people on board. And eventually it just got to the point where I was actually made, able to make it work on my own. And so I was able to quit the full-time job and just focus on my business. And it's all had its ups and downs, you know, Sure. really great months followed by really terrible months. And it's just something you kind of have to look back and say, I've had a lot of great months. I've had a lot of terrible months, but when it all levels out, I'm doing okay. I'm glad you brought that up because I actually did talk about having to pace yourself when you're growing, when you're starting your business. It's really important to work for somebody else while you're still starting to grow your business. Because if you start full force, you should probably have a huge savings if you're going to do that. But if you don't have that, you need to work for somebody else while you slowly grow and scale. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, knowing what you know now about starting a business, where do you think you would change things if you could go back and restart your business? Uh, I valued myself way too low at the beginning. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to get some money flowing on uh, outside my nine to five job. And so I was writing for a fifth of what I do now. And so if I went back and redid it, I probably wouldn't jump in at the level I'm at now with the experience, but I definitely charge quite a bit more and then prospect a lot more. Sure. I uh, always have that pipeline. So when those lean months come in, I'm not scrambling, just going back through my Rolodex and right. seeing who can I can contact. Yeah, that's really important. Um, what is one piece of advice you could offer that you wish you'd known sooner? Not everyone is an ethical business person. <laughs> I've had a number of people that just flat out refuse to pay. And so yeah. it forced me that I can't provide my service and then charge. Now I have to charge before I provide the service. Otherwise, I've lost thousands of dollars. Oh, that's so smart in your in your field because with you, it's not a tangible service until you write it. So like yep. you said, you have to, they need to pony up first. So, yep. all right. Um, I learned a lot of, from you in the biz to biz lessons that you've presented to our group about niche markets. And it really helped me decide to start my business. Um, I was on the fence about starting my business because I thought I needed to do all the cleaning services that were out there. But your presentation about niche markets really helped me narrow down my focus on just move out cleaning. So if you wouldn't mind, I'm sure it's been a long time since you've done this presentation. So I'm kind of putting you on the spot. But could you just elaborate a little bit more on why it's important to start with a very narrow focus when you're starting a business? So I kind of liken it to a doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, you can have a general practitioner versus a neurosurgeon. And when you look at their income levels, especially the general practitioner is making good money, but the neurosurgeon surgeon's making five, 10 times as much. Yeah. When you can narrow it down, now he doesn't have to worry about this guy that has a stub toe and that guy has a hangnail and that person's sick with whatever. All he focuses on is those brain disorders. So when you're doing your marketing, you don't have to worry about all these different people. You're like, I just want 
these people right here. Mm -hmm. And now you can create and say, Hey, I specialize just in these people. And then people will say, Oh, if you're specialized specialist in this, they're more likely to trust you and become Mm -hmm. your client. Well, and I think it makes it easier for people to refer to you too. If, because if I just say I clean everything, then people are like, okay, great. (laughs) What do I refer you to then? I come clean my garage. Right. Yeah. And I have gotten weird requests for stuff like that. Like I've gotten somebody that wanted me to clean their garage shop. I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't do that. Like, so I needed to tell people that though. I didn't brand myself that way when I first start. Well, I guess when I first started, I did. I was just move out cleans, but then I started adding services and now I'm kind of reeling it back in again and be like, no, I don't do that. I only do this. So um, again, I credit that to you. Um What's your favorite part of working for yourself? The freedom that comes with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, before, when you have a boss, you have to put in a request for time off, sometimes as much as two months out. Mm-hmm. And now if I want to take Wednesday afternoon off to go hike around on the Rim Rocks because it's super nice out this week, I can just drop everything. Yeah. Sometimes if I have a deadline coming up, it means I have to put in more hours later. But that flexibility and that freedom is what I think a lot of people crave. And that's what I, that's all what I wanted. And before I started my business, I didn't realize that's what I wanted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. That's my favorite part of working for myself too. What's your least favorite part of working for yourself? I am responsible for everything. <laughs> I got to get all the clients lined up. I got to do the billing. I got to, mm-hmm. obviously if I get, you grow big enough, you can outsource all this, but you're still, everything ultimately lands back on your shoulders. Mm-hmm. For me, it's acting like a debt collector when people don't pay. You know. So, um, what do you do to try to overcome the parts that you don't enjoy? I just know that there are the parts that I enjoy. So I focus on those. And I know that I have to get these things done. And as soon as they're done, I can wipe them off. And I, if I'm feeling stressed or anxious about something, I just sit back and I say, what's making me the most stressed and anxious? And mm-hmm. I can just focus on that, get it done, get it out of the way. And now I can just move on and wipe that stress out. If it's something terrible that I just don't understand, like I have an accountant that does all my bookkeeping bookkeeping, because I don't understand it. I don't want to understand it. I don't want to even try to learn it. Yep. So I just outsource that and move on with it. Yep. hundred percent. And that's another thing that I learned from you because I was like, this brings me no joy. I hate doing accounting stuff. I don't understand it. I don't want to learn it. I don't have the time. So best money I ever spent. Hire a good accountant, guys. Um, You have a new course available, um, and it's to help people who are considering starting a business and how to lay a really strong foundation for that. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yep. So it's called No to Grow, which is short for going from no idea to growing your idea. Mm -hmm. Um, Basically, there's a ton of people out there that have that entrepreneurial mindset, but they don't know how to get started with it. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a kickoff that says you have skills, you have talents that other people don't have. And here's how you can take those and turn them into something you can make money with. It goes all the way from building up who you are, why you do what you are, what your talents and skills are, how to turn those into a product or service, all the way to at the end of the course, you have your own, you have a handful of clients that are ready to either they've already bought from you or they're ready to. Okay. Um, Could someone who needs to rebrand their business, like let's say me, I'm starting with real estate. Do you think something like this would be helpful for somebody who maybe already has a business, but maybe just needs to like think about their mission, their purpose, things like that? Or do you think it's better for somebody who's just starting out? It could be for either. Okay. Uh, The first lesson, it's three parts long, three lessons, first section is completely free. Anybody can sign up and take that. And that really just dives into who you are, why you do what you do, what your skills are and everything. Sure. Uh, The rest of the course can kind of pull that out and it helps you develop your systems and your procedures too. Mm -hmm. And so that way, if you're starting something new that you kind of know what you're doing, but you haven't finalized it yet, it can help you get everything systematized. So then if you do a hire employees, you just hand them a sheet. This is how we work. Okay. And everything's ready to go for them. Cool. That's, I mean, that's awesome because I don't have standard operating procedures. That's something that I need to work on if I wanted to scale my business. Right now, it's kind of nice to just keep it small so that I can still manage it from, I'm, I'm kind of a control freak. You know this about me. Um, well, that's pretty much all I had for today. Thank you so much for talking about that. I really wanted to be able to make this information accessible to people because I don't think that everybody has 
the same circle of friends and entrepreneurs in their life. Not everybody has a networking group or people that they can turn to for advice when they're trying to grow a business. So I appreciate your time. I know you're busy. So this is Jessica Gilbert with Scott Siri with Siri Content Development. And this is Sunny Living. Make sure you like and subscribe before you go, guys. Thanks so much.